What's up, you Titan fans? Titan Bros are back, ready for a preview of week three against the Cleveland Browns. Welcome in. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to have a great show. Yep. Uh, week three is, uh, let's see if we can get ourselves above 500 going into this. It's always nice though, when you've got yourself you know, a winning record. Uh, I think it'll be a good game, a close game. I don't think any side's going to blow each other out. But, uh, yep, let's dive into this and, and uh, kind of talk about a couple of players on each side and, and what we think is going to happen. See if we can pick up our first two game win back to back since doing it. I think it is, I think we did against the Broncos and then the Packers. And then we had the seven game losing streak to end the season. And then we start off with a loss. Now we got to win. So let's see if we get our first two games winning them, winning them back to back for the first time in forever. Which All is right. Kind of sad. Which is kind of sad. Because Mike Vrabel's first three years as a head coach, we just had a winning culture. We just did nine and seven, nine and seven, but went to the AFC championship, 11 and five, 12 and five. And then last year started off seven and three. So it's like Titans. We just won football games. Just what we did. Even if we were never really a threat to win the Super Bowl or even go to it. We just won football games. It's just so weird. Technically, you know, we had a eight game losing streak. And then we won, but you can still say we're one and eight in the last nine mm-hmm. games. So. It's just, say, it just ruined I, my confidence. It ruined my yeah, confidence. It has, but I was going to say, what's weird to me, though, is how it kind of changed my uh, attitude a little bit. Just one win can feel so good, uh, just in the sense that I was so down on times when we had an eight-game losing streak. We lost to the Saints. You know, you can watch the recap. I was so down on them. And, you know, I just feel like we're a bunch of losers. And we still could be, but just that one win, like, okay, take a deep breath. We're still in this thing. We're one one We're tied with the Jags. You know, there's still a lot of game left. So one win can do that for you. It can. And we really got to start. We, now this is a conversation for another day, but we really got to start. We got to start starting our starters in the preseason. We got to start starting our starters yes. in the preseason because we start so stupid slow every year. Because let me tell you what the, happened the last three years. Because I can't remember 2020 what week two was. But in 2021, we got murdered by the Cardinals. If you remember correctly, we only put up 13 points, allowed like 38. And then week two against the Cardinals, remember our week two against the Seahawks. Remember we were getting murdered by ha- at halftime. I'm like, this is this is ridiculous. Like we're like we're we're terrible. Like I was in my lowest of lows at halftime of week two, but then we ended up doing this crazy comeback to go to overtime, and then we beat them in overtime. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was 2021. Then 2022, we started off and laid an egg against the Giants, got beat 21 to 20. And then the next week just got blew out by the Bills. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Um, on Monday Night Football, I'm like, that was the lowest of lows for that season. And then this year, we started off where you know, we didn't score a single touchdown, lost. And then at one point in the first half of the Chargers game, we were down 11-0. Again, got to that point of my lowest of lows where I'm just like, so we're just going to win five or six games this year. That's all we're going to do. And the thing with Mike Vapor, he, he does some stuff I like, and he does a lot of stuff I don't like. And one thing, he's he's a pride, stubborn man, and that drives me nuts sometimes because I think if you're honest, you, you, you would know that the slow start is because we don't play in the preseason, and he refuses to admit to that. And... uh you know, um, Nick Sirianni, Sirianni uh, for the Eagles, he even said that they had a slow start. He's like, you know what? I learned my lesson. I'm going to stop playing my starters in preseason. He said that. And I'm like, there was a coach right there. I admitted I was wrong. I need to stop playing. Even if it's a driver to play my starters. Vrabel's was too prideful to do that. And that is something that annoys me because, yeah, there's no reason just to mail it in. Like, yeah, we're going to lose week one. We'll just, we just know that's going to happen. You know, there's no reason to do that. At least entertain it. Like, at least give it a shot. Like next year, start not next year. At least when it comes to quarterbacks, we're going to start our starter because unless we do a wild card and bring in a veteran, it's going to be either Will Levis or Malik Willis, and it's going to be a position battle. So they're both going to play. But like, if like for whatever reason, let's pretend Tannehill throws for thirty touchdowns and only seven picks, and we go, you know, to the AFC Championship and lose, and we decide we want to bring Tannehill back on a one year deal, I would be against it. But let's just if we wanted to do that, at least. 
consider throwing Tannehill out there to see if it makes our week one and week two performance any better. Because yeah. basically, he was terrible the two games in 2021. I guess he went terrible against the Seahawks, but like not good against the Giants and uh, Bills last yep. year. And it was a game and a half before he finally turned it up, which he turned it up, but it was finally a game and a half until he turned it up this year. So, but anyways, we're like five minutes and six minutes into this video. And we haven't even got to the beginning of this Browns Titans preview, but anywho, I'm going to go over the injury report first to start this bad boy off. I'm going to try to make sure I talk my mic because apparently last time I was doing that and it wasn't, wasn't sound so hot. So Luke Gifford, Quad. I'm going to go with these, especially if they are a very low level person. I'm going to go with it pretty quick. But Luke Gifford was with a quad, did not practice, did not practice full practice. No designation, so he's good to go. Anthony Kendall, hip, did not practice, did not practice. Limited, he's questionable. But he's like the last cornerback on the depth chart, so I'm really not worried about Anthony Kendall. I don't even know why he made the roster because I still liked, I think it was Amani Marsh and Eric Guerrero. I liked both of them better than Anthony yeah. Kendall. Yeah. But what do I know? Peter Skronsky. Obviously, with his uh, issue he's got going on, might have to, he? I think he got his appendix removed, right? Did that officially happen? I believe so. I believe they okay. said he already had the procedure and the surgery. It's Rabel said in his press well, conference. That's well, that's good. Then, then he's on the heel. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is going to miss this game and probably going to miss next game as well. But thankfully, um, the good and Dylan, bad of that is the bad is like that's just Titan luck. You know, that's not even. You know, injury that just sucks but the good thing <clears> is you can't call, say injury history you can't say he's injury prone or nothing like that you know no. I mean, this is just a freak thing so hopefully yeah, i agree he's better, he's better. but anyway go ahead yeah i agreed agreed um next we got tier tier tart he had a knee he was a did not practice limited full no designation so he's good to go which is good because we'll need that Danico Autry, this one's sad because he's just an old man, but he plays so good. I wish we would have got him when he was younger. He has foot slash groin. He was limited, limited, limited. And then he's questionable. See, um, I, didn't he, I didn't even know he was hot. Yeah, I, apparently it happened. I don't know what happened, honestly. But uh, then we have Derek Henry. He says toe slash rest. He was limited, did not, full. So he's just all over the place. Uh, no designation, so Derrick Henry's good to go. Harold, Harold Landry, this is no good, but Harold Landry has a hamstring because those have a way of Lingling. sticking around. He was uh, limited, limited, full, good to go. Christian Fulton, hamstring, full, 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 good to go. Amani Hooker, concussion, full, 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 good to go. So those are all good news. DeAndre Hopkins' is ankle, uh, and he was... Full, limited, did not practice, questionable, but it's the same ankle injury. He didn't re-aggravate it. I'm sure it's just like he's 31 years old. He don't need that much practice. So and he did all right. He did all right, I thought. Yeah, he was he still led the team with targets. I think he had five targets and four catches or six targets and five catches. Either way, he did have a drop. That would help a little bit if he caught. He that. did have a drop. So yeah, I guess the technically the one target that he didn't bring in was the one that he just dropped. So so there's that. And then Kiaris Jackson, he's the only one that we're going to miss in any sort of way because he uh, was ankle, hurt himself in practice on Wednesday, and then he limited on Thursday, did not practice on Friday. He is deemed out. I think he got put on the IR today. He got put on the IR. Otis Reese got cut, and then we actually brought Mason Kinsey. Mason Kinsey, and who was the other person? Uh, Chance Campbell. Chance Campbell, the linebacker. Uh, second year, six-round pick from last year. Put them on our active roster. So so there's that. That was kind of a mouthful because, sadly, our injury, our injury list is long already, but so are the, uh, so are the Browns. Honestly, I'm just going to skip all the Browns except for two because everybody is going to play except for two people. Uh, James Hudson, the tackle with the ankle, was uh, limited Thursday. Did not practice on Friday. He's questionable. Okay. So there's that. And then their cornerback, Greg Newsom, he's out. Greg Newsom will not suit up and play. Um, so that's that's the injury report. And that also took longer than I thought. I can't just spit out some words and then call it a day. So I would say overall that's good. Getting Fulton and Hooker back for a game or two <laughs> before, before they're out oh, again. Oh, maybe a half. Or a half game, especially with a hamstring for 
for Fulton. I could see him just being the kind of guy he just plays a little bit, misses a little bit, plays a little bit, and that's just that just be how it is, which is sad, but that's how it is. Why I think we need to let him walk after the year. Assuming the healthy, that's going to help the secondary having them in, um, because especially Hoko, Hoko, I like him a lot skill wise. I like Hoko a lot. Um, he needs to start I've, staying healthy though, because he's making well, eleven million. He's making eleven million a year. He's not on a rookie contract, cheap rookie contract. So he's making eleven million a year. So if he wants to stay on this roster and not just get cut or traded, he needs to start staying I on agree. the field. I agree, but he, uh, he and Fulton's gonna help our secondary a lot. But one thing that annoys me is a pass rush, which I think will be the strength of our defense. We're losing two. Oh, wait, what the plan? But on the injury list, the Harold Landry, he is playing. Like he's not questionable, but still, hamstrings are always scary to see. Uh, and Dino, Dino Autry is probably my favorite pass rush we got. I'll be honest. And see the groin and a foot was it? Uh, I haven't seen two things. That's not good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, let's hope Alan Key maybe can play more like he did in Week One. Yeah, he was a little quieter, or honestly, he was a lot quieter just because of how disruptive he was in week one. Um, so, yeah, got to see that. But let's actually talk about the matchup a little bit because we've almost not even mentioned the Cleveland Browns at all. Um, you hate to see any star player go down. You do. But let's be honest, Titans did luck out in a lot of ways. Having Nick Chubb, who's the best, probably the second best player on their team, but their best player on offense, the only person I can think that would be better than would be would be Miles Garrett, who I think we're probably going to hate by the end of Sunday. Um, so again, you hate to see anybody go down, but if someone's if he's going to go down, it might as well be right before you face him. <laughs> so that 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 helps. That helps. That, I think it could very well be similar to what happened to Austin Eckler. Because let's be honest, if we had to go to all, overtime without Austin Eckler. If they had Austin Eckler, they probably they just would have won. So yeah, I agree. I agree. So we might luck out and this give us the same hope that you know Austin Eckler being gone gave us last week. Yeah, and I'll say uh, our run defense has looked really good for us two weeks. They don't uh, running <clears throat> against the Titans in both weeks so far. It's almost been a give me like give up play. Is this run up the middle? No gain. All right, let's go to the next play. Like it, our run stop has been amazing, um, and no chub. I really think this is going to put a lot of pressure on Watson. I really do. They're going to have a lot of thorn longs. Hopefully our pass rushers can get to them. Because I, I do not see them having much success against us winning the ball. Yeah, here's the thing. I I heard on, uh, I don't remember what it was on, but the stat was Titans the last 17 games. So if you take away the two first games of last year and then put in the two first games of this year instead, we have the number one rushing defense. And it was like a, 2.4 average is all we've yeah. allowed over those 17 games, That's which really is good. insane. Jeff, Jeffy Sim is probably a big reason for that. And uh, Tier Tart. And Danico Autry, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Her- and- if say Harold Landry's not necessarily known in the in the run game, and neither is Arden Key. But those front guys. And then, of course, yeah. Al Shire, he's going to help a lot, too. But, yeah, so we're stopping the run. I'm not, I, I did see they got Cream Hunt. I'm sure you saw that, too. And I think that's going to help. Like, he's going to hit the ground running because he knows, you know, the Browns, this, they have the same coaching staff here, you know. So that's going to help them a lot. But I still trust our run defense. You know, he's going to be yeah. not in football shape. He's probably going to be on limited snaps because, you know, he's just joining the team. Um, so, But I, I fully expect it's going to go down to Watson. What is he going to do? Because I don't think they're going to get us by running the ball. I agree. I agree. Now, they did pick up, no, they didn't pick up anybody. I was thinking I picked up in fantasy football. But Jerome uh, Ford, who ended up replacing Chubb, played well. He did play well. In fact, on fantasy football, he gave me, would have given me 22 points if I had him in my active roster. But he looks good, too. So a combination of him him and Kareem, uh, Kareem Hunt, still going to be a deadly combo. But it really is legitimately because we talk about pass rush being our best feature as a football team. In all honesty, it's our run stop as our best because I'm, yeah. we were either first or second. But I really do want to say it was first. We were number one against the run last year. And two weeks into the season this year, we're number one against the run. Yeah. So in all actuality, our best feature is our run defense. Yeah, so. we could definitely stop the run. And what I like is that Watson's been under duress for two weeks now. Like, 
there's been a lot of pressure. The offensive line does not look that good. Um, so hopefully, when I, you know, to me, the dream situation here, we stop the run, a lot of throwing longs, and we go out there and just eat, you know, eat that offensive line, and we create our pressure here. That's that's the, the situation I'm hoping for. But the thing is, what I'm scared is that they're basically going to do the same thing to us. I agree. It's going to be a, in my opinion, this game is going to go a lot like the Saints game. Yep. It's going to be I just agree. a stupid field goal fest or punt fest or basically special teams are going to have a big part in this. Yep. Whether it comes to flipping the fields, whether it comes to hitting field goals or just like, you know, a really good return that knocks out half the field. So then they only got to pick up three first downs to actually be in field goal range and kick a field goal and get three points where maybe they wouldn't have otherwise gotten range to do. And that can go for either side. So that that that's huge. That's huge. Because we're talking about our defense and how they're solid and getting our secondary help back with Amani Hooker and Christian Fulton is huge as well. But the Browns defense. Do you know how many... Do you know how many touchdowns they've they've allowed this year? Let me try to think. Uh, who did they play in week two when Chubb uh, got home? Uh, Steelers. Steelers. Uh, uh, one. Technically. Oh, technically, unless I heard incorrectly, zero. There was a uh, scoop and scoop and score by T.J. Watt. Uh huh. Let me let me make sure I'm not got picked actually they yeah they did they did get they allowed one they allowed one touchdown against yeah. the Steelers so in two weeks they've allowed one touchdown yeah yeah that's Just really good yeah because yeah. our offense because here's the thing we did terrible against the Saints who has a good defense we did good and possibly we had so many ugly drives but anyway we did good against the Chargers who I hold right now has the 32nd defense in the two weeks so we did good against them now we're going against a, a good defense again. I'm pretty sure our offense, it's just going to be safe to say, we're not going to be good enough to beat good defenses. Sadly, we're going against a lot of good defenses. So I think the best thing we could do is make this an ugly slugfest, like we did with Saints, but just make a play or two to flip it when we win it. You know, I think that's yeah. what it's going to be about. Um, because I agree with you. If they've only allowed one touchdown in two weeks, the chances of us scoring to say three touchdowns is not very likely in this game. No, I'm not seeing that unless there's some defensive touchdowns to help yeah. out. So and I the, feel like, sorry, go ahead. I was just no, go ahead because I was gonna have a new conversation. Well, I, I, I was kind of doing it as well, but I've like got a game playing as Miles Garrett. I can easily see him destroying this game. You know, like two sacks, a forced fumble, five quarterback hits. I, I can see like if they put him on uh, what's Dillard's Dillard? Name? Yeah, Andre. If they put him on Dillard, he will destroy us. So we have to have some kind of game playing as Miles Garrett. We cannot let him single-handedly destroy us and win us this game. Gotta chip. I don't think we do that enough sometimes for my liking. But we gotta chip it. If it's a tight end running back, I don't care. We gotta make sure someone else in the pass rush beat us. Don't let Miles Garrett beat us. Like Zadarius Smith, you mean? Yeah. I mean, and he's not bad, but he's not Miles Garrett. Miles no. Garrett destroy a game just by itself. Do not let him do that. Because in a defensive game like this, all it takes is one fumble from Ryan Tannehill when it gets hit by Miles Garrett that they get the ball at 15 online. That could be the difference between winning and losing. That's why I think we got to do a lot of play action pass. That would be nice. Things like that. That makes people That's... delay or hold for just a second. Yeah, I agree. And I'll say this. Um, this is a very random thing to say, but you know something? I saw him do it twice last week. I'm like, well, nothing else. As he's getting older, at least he's finding something he can be more, you know, he can get better at. But I think I saw Derek Henry make like two or three blocks last game. I'm like, that was a good block. That was a good block. Because even though he's big, he's never been a great blocker. But he did several good blocks, though. So I hope maybe we could help make him help Andre Dillard. I don't know what you want to do, but, you know, uh, running back blocking and tight end blocking will be huge in this game, I think. Yeah, or just don't have any of those plays like we had last week where Andre Dillard and Xavier Newman both looked at the same guy and they're both like, now we're good, and they just kind of yeah. slid elsewhere and he just well, you know, by looking shot. at it by the few times I saw we play, just look like for whatever reason Newman decided to help uh, Andrew, which he was doing fine, and look like 
looked like someone who didn't actually come off the edge, but kind of looking like he would. Um, Dillard's like, yeah, I'm going for him, even though he never did actually end up rushing. And so yeah. he just looked like an idiot instead because he just stood there looking at like a guy who's not rushing and just let that guy go right straight through. So I saw what happened. But That's fourth still, and five, right? We we're actually yes. being aggressive and going for it, but didn't even have a chance to throw that. Not even. He really snapped it. Went, oh no! And just <laughs> turned with it and got hit. Which is stupid. But we That's won stupid, the game, so it did. thankfully it didn't they matter. They will do that all day and destroy Tannehill if we let them. So we gotta make sure our blocking is. You now this would be a good game to have Peter Sklonsky back, but yeah, sadly not. That yeah, would be. Would be. I really wish. Peter Skronsky could play tackle. Because I feel like our O-line would be better if he played left tackle, if Dylan Raidens played left guard, because he actually yeah. didn't do bad. He actually didn't do bad at all at left guard. So we had Skronsky at left tackle, and then Dylan Raidens at left guard, Brewer at center, right guard for Daniel Brunskill. And Chris Hubbard's been one of our best offensive players. <laughs> Chris Hubbard has been a pleasant surprise because he, to be honest, he wasn't even that good going to, to us, you know. Because I'm gonna look at reading about him, he's like he's bounced around. He hasn't been good, you know. Uh, who was the other guy we was looking at? Uh, was, Noah, nope, not Noah Fant. Uh, George, George Fant. George Fant. He he had a better career than Hubbard, and I'm like, yes, and he's him. like two or three years younger as well. Yeah, but uh, let's. Uh, it's only two weeks, but Hubbard's been really good for us. You know, I will say that, and I'm surprised by that. But uh, I do, I just think tackles are so important, and I hate that. I think our weakest spot would be Dillard. Would you say that's true? And I hate that because, you know, which is dumb because uh, he's getting paid the most out of all. Is he really? Yeah, yeah that's, that's pathetic. I think he's making nine million this year. Brunskill's like two and a half, Brewers four, Pierce Gronsky's some super low because he's a. On a rookie contract, and then Chris Hubbard's a veteran minimum, it's like one million. So honestly, all of them put together probably make about as much as Dillard does by himself. That's which, is what is, which is one of the dumb things about tackles: how much you have to pay for them, even if they're not any good. Here's the thing: NPF has he ever played tackle? I mean, uh, tackle Guard? on uh, uh, Dillard to replace Dillard if he came back? Because you ever know, right now, the... technically Hubbard is NPF right now. When NPF comes back, can he replace Dillard instead? I don't know. I mean, MPF has played on the left side some, but I don't know I don't if they're going to do that. Yeah, well, if Dill is the weakest link, I'd like to get him out of though. But Yeah, I guess we'll see about and, that. And like you said, comes. Hubbard's played well, so when MPF comes back, do we even want to take it or put him in to replace Hubbard? I mean, yeah. Like, at this at this point, I almost would rather just keep Chris Hubbard in because uh, Nicholas Petit Ferrer would just have to be playing out of his mind to be playing better. Yeah. It's like one anyway. of the situations back in the day when we had Dennis Kelly, where it's like, Dennis Kelly's not the issue. He's not, like, amazing. And maybe we got Chip help him some. But he's not the problem. So let's spend our resources, draft picks, money, whatever, elsewhere. That's kind of how Chris Hubbard's being for us this year, in my humble opinion. Yeah. But. I, I would say, back to the comment recap this game, I would like to see, because Kelly did it a lot in week one. Did not do it so much in week two, which is funny because week one we didn't do so well, and week two we did on uh, the offensive ball. But week one we threw a couple of like wrinkled plays in there, like ones that Tannehill missed on. But remember the what was it? Running to hand it to the running back, then who gave it to the quarterback? Uh, what was it? And then he missed uh, Chig down to the sideline. You know that play. Thank you. Like, gave it to Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry handed it off to Nick Westbrook Aquina. Nick Westbrook Aquina gave it back to Tannehill who. Popped it over and because I mean, that play worked, it worked. You know he was open. So to beat a good defense, maybe we should throw something in like that, like twice this game, maybe to get somebody open. To you know, maybe try to get a touchdown that way. We just need Ten Hill to actually hit them. And here's another thing: Saints got a good defense, really good. De- nope, well they do. But Browns, um, let's, Ten Hill, please don't throw three picks. <laughs> don't do that. That's not. You can't just do that and say, oh, it's a good defense. You know, don't don't do that. That's unacceptable. unacceptable. Um, but anyway, so maybe Kelly can throw in some trick trick plays, one one or two, to open things up for us. That would be huge, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, we're going to have to do something to get rid of this nasty pass rush to keep them back for a minute. Yeah. So that way they're not just able to be unbelievably aggressive. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, in my opinion, is what's really going to come down to this game. I do 
sounds terrible to say out loud. I trust us to get 13 to 17 points. Not much more, if any more, but we'll get 13 to 17, in my humble opinion. Is what's going to be the difference with this game is if Deshaun Watson goes back to being Deshaun Watson of old and making crazy off script plays, or if he becomes the erratic, uncomfortable looking, just doing whatever with the ball. Yeah, that is so weird because I just don't know what to think about him because you we've been touched by him so much in our careers. We know how good he was. And so it's so weird for me just to think, yeah, Browns offense ain't going to score much points against us because I know Watson had so much talent, not just talent, but he was so good in his few, first few years, but he just hasn't looked like it. If you look at the stats last year and this year, it's not good. And the question, I'm just scared, like, of course, why wouldn't the game, the, well, try that. The, the game that he plays against us, why wouldn't that be the first game that he just goes off in this brown quill? Um, you know, I'm so scared of that, but if he doesn't go off, I agree with you. I think it's going to be somewhere between 13, 17 points. Um, I think whoever gets to 20 points wins this game. That's if, if anyone if, can hit to 20. If a team gets to 20, they yeah, will win yeah, this if, game, if, But if someone gets to 20, I think they win. Um, but I can see both teams being 17 or under. Joe, you want me? To, you want to say our final final score? What we think is going to be? Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, say some final scores and who we think is going to bring home the cake. I don't think that's a term. <laughs> so, um, I remember when before the season started, we was going week by week, who we think is going to win and lose. I took this one as an L. But as you know, as the season goes on, things you know, change. Injuries and things it's change, up. momentum, yada, yada, yada. Um, but what I think, and it's in Cleveland, that's something we haven't mentioned. It's in the dog pound. Which no fans can be loud. And let's admit, our offensive line with doing false starts is ridiculous. That's two weeks we in was, a row. We was bad at home. You don't do that at home. But anyway, so that does scare me a little bit. And we're going to be trying to get off early because we've got Miles Garrett coming down on us. So that could be an issue. And now I'm doing this, I'm talking myself out of it. But some reason I just feel like, you know what? We're not going to go one and two. Brave was going to find a way to get back to his way, which is winning this game. That's what he used to do. We haven't been doing so well lately, but we did against Chargers. We found a way to win that game. I'll say he's going to find a way to win this ugly game. Tannehill's not going to embarrass himself. He's going to do a play or two. I'm like, that's the Tannehill I want. Maybe Derrick Henry might. We we look like the Derrick Henry I want him to look like. I say we win this game 17 to 13. Two weeks in a row. One time I changed mine. This that's time cool. I let you speak first. Uh-huh. I was gonna say seventeen to thirteen. Oh, that's dumb. <laughs> Same score. Now, like that last time, you said yours first, and I kind of changed mine to yours. You did, but this time I already had it in my head that did I was you say Titans. Seven, yeah, Titans seventeen. Did you pick 13. Titans all three weeks. No, I predict uh, pick uh, Chargers last Chargers, week. You did. Yep, that's right. You did. So. Yeah. I, I this is the first time I'm picking the Titans, and I got Titans winning 17-13. Again, it's all about momentum because yeah, it, you, you can look at my before the season starts prediction. I said Browns win, but they just lost Chubb. Sometimes an injury like that to a superstar can really deflate the team. They just lost Chubb. Uh, we, we feel good just getting a win under our belt for the first time in a long time. I say we go to the dog pound and we just get an ugly win, just an ugly. Be, win. As what would be nice is if we did get a 17-13 ugly win. What if Joe Burrow does end up missing a couple weeks and we get to go against the Joe Burrow list Bengals and we could jump up to three and one. And then we go against the Colts, who I still think we're a, a better team than the Colts and go four and one. That would be huge. And then that would be huge. But and I would, I'd be the- honestly fine losing in London, drop the four and two and then go on, go into the bye week four and two. Yeah, I'll I'm say this. The Joe Burrow list Bengals. Oh, the Anthony Richardson less Colts. One of those games just feel like a trap game to me. Like one of those games we would lose for no reason. Anthony Richardson will be back by then. It's I think it's a concussion is all it is. So if he misses three weeks with a concussion, then I think he just needs to go ahead and retire from football. How long did Traylon Brooks miss? I thought like he missed a while, didn't he? I think he missed I mean, he one, one, maybe two. 
Might have been two. I I've know never... he missed a lot of time between that and the toe, but um, anyway, either way, that's a whole different conversation. But um, I just feel like but we're, we're going to lose a game that we shouldn't win, or that we shouldn't, but one game at a time. And I say Cleveland will get this win here. And again, this is me. I'm going to go and say Watson's going to look like the Watson we've seen the first two weeks, which, let's admit, is not that good. The Watson we've seen right now has not been that good. If he goes back to the Texas Watson, we're in trouble. But I don't think that's what we're going to see. I don't think we're going to see that either, one, because we have a good defense. Two, we haven't seen Deshaun Watson really, really good since 2020. Yeah, and that's a long time. And yeah, because he, he set out the whole 2021 season, which hurt him a lot. And then 2022, he was suspended for a lot of it. So he went a long time without playing football. And it's it's something that you have to keep practicing and keep good at. You do. And that, that, I think that just showed it because Washington was such a good talent. And now look at him. So I think that shows that you can't just stop it and get right back on. It's not like a bike, you know. You know, you just yeah. you can't just stop and get back on. And he hasn't led a team to the playoffs since 2019. Because if you remember correctly, his last year as a star in Houston, they only won like five or six games. Man, I mean, he was still really good that year, but the defense was really bad. Yeah, but sometimes you, if you're as the quarterback of the team, you got to lead your team to the playoffs. So, um, Damn. what about him? He doesn't do that anymore. He, last year, well, last year he couldn't because we went one and four without him. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'll just say this: in the primes, I would take Watson over Tannehill any day of the week. But I'm not sure I would because at this point, Watson's had how many elite years did he have? Like four or five. I looked at his stats last night. Actually, it was, it was yeah four or five. It was really good numbers too. Like Tannehill, lo- well, I would say love to have that. He didn't have that one year that was probably up though. But still, you can't tell me. This is a whole different conversation, Hill. But you can't tell me you think Tannehill and his apex was as good as Watson was. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Watson's was a flash in the pan. Five years ain't no flash and no pan. I mean, Tannehill's been in the league for, what, 11 11 seasons, 12 seasons? So he's literally been in the NFL twice as long as that hot streak. But... I'm more talking about right now. Who would I I, rather have? Right now, I'd rather have Tannehill than Deshaun Watson doing whatever he's doing. I would say this. Neither uh, Watson's game this year was anywhere close to being as bad as Tannehill was in week one. Now, week two, I say Tannehill has the best game, but the worst game as well, if you compare the two games. I mean, Tannehill had a game that's like, you're not going to see another quarterback be that bad this rest of this year, probably. 28 was his quarterback rating. 28. No one does that. So, it's that was horrific. It's more common than you think, especially those picks. When those picks happen, but yeah. So, guess we'll see. Twenty-eight. Anyway, I'm here to actually feel good about the Titans. I'm not here to bash him, but I would say this: Ten Hill to me, I am watching him. Special attention on him because you got to beat someone good. You can't just beat a thirty-second rate charge of defense and make me say, "Oh, you're all good now." If he did play well, he did play well. But go out here, and I'm not asking for three touchdowns. But can you complete 66% of your completions? Can you throw me a touchdown and take care of the ball? Actually, that's all I ask for. Take care of the ball. No turnovers, one touchdown, 65% of your completions. Can you do that for me? If you can, I think we win. If you can't, we lose, and you're a bum. Sorry. All right. That's my opinion. There you go. Hmm. I think whoever takes care of the football the best wins this. I agree. I think- all right, I those that. interceptions, whoever fumbles, that's what's going to end up deciding this game, because it, which is weird because last week, Chargers, Titans, neither team had a single turnover, not a single fumble, not a single interception on either that side. So it was the weirdest game, thing in the world. Say that. Yep. Yeah, so. so yeah, I do so. wish, even when Titans has got a good defense, do you agree that I wish we turned the ball over more? We never do it. Fish our corners. Never our do cornerbacks it. do not get interceptions. It is so huge. Turnovers are such a huge momentum shift and just a short field. But we never do it. Ever. 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 I don't understand why. If Bayard, best defensive games. If Bayard and Hooker aren't getting interceptions, we just do not get interceptions. Nope. Like even line, can a linebacker get one or two, please? Something, you know? Apparently not. 
<coughs> Sorry. Apparently not. So here we're, we're, we're putting on our Homer hats this week. We're both going to say we're going to say the Titans win. I'm saying it very much unconfidently because yeah. all all the way up until yesterday, probably I was I was given going to give Browns the edge. But I would, then I with would Nick with Nick Chubb being gone and with Deshaun Watson just playing the way he is, it's just. I don't know. It's hard to see it. Ch- to me, Chubb is one of the best backs in the league, and you can't tell me you can, you lose one of the best backs in the league and and tell me it doesn't affect you. You can't. So, I mean, exactly. Will. If we had Chubb, I would say Browns probably. I would say Browns probably twenty to seventeen. I think he would at least make a touchdown difference. And instead, I say seventeen thirteen. Yeah, I think it'll be a nail biter. Like I could right. see them getting in the twenty yard line. Well, they are down 17, 13, where they need a touchdown, and they take several yeah, shots at exactly. the end zone where we're really biting the nails. Make it a close one. But uh, yep. so, yeah, we'll be sure to recap it. Uh, usually Sunday evening, we'll get that recorded and put up. So, hopefully, it'll be our second in a row a victory video. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's all we got. We are going to go ahead and sign out of here, and we will see y'all Sunday night. Peace.